Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to discuss a very important topic in GI cancers that is locally advanced rectal cancer and we are going to understand the advances in the management of this cancer including the topic of total neoadjuvant therapy. We are going to touch upon total neoadjuvant therapy basics in this video. And in upcoming uh, videos in this series, we are going to see the recent trials and then the most important topic on locally advanced rectal cancer, that is when to use the watch and wait approach and what are its pros and cons. So there will be around two to three videos in this series. So let us start today's video. We will see what is locally advanced rectal cancer, low risk and high risk rectal cancer. We will see the timeline on how total neoadjuvant therapy has come into play and what is total neoadjuvant therapy. Before we go into the details, you need to understand the staging of rectal cancer. If you don't recollect, we have a video of staging of rectal cancer. You can see it. We also have a video on levels of rectal cancer, upper, mid and lower. Aims of treatment, we have videos on the metastatic as well as the non-metastatic rectal cancer and the current available treatment option. So all these four videos are already there on EduSearch Clinic's uh, website as well as the YouTube channel. Just to touch these topics in brief, the staging I have simplified previously. Stage 1 you just need to remember is T1, T2, N0 and stage 2 is T3, T4, N0, right? So stage 1 and 2 are not negative disease and stage 3 is not positive disease. Whether it's N1, A1, B, N2, whatever it is, is stage 3. So to understand this in clinics and to remember it practically, stage 1 and 2 are not negative disease. Stage 3 is not positive disease and stage 4 is metastatic disease. However, you also need to remember the levels of disease, right? Up to 15 centimeters from anal world is included in rectal cancer, where low rectal tumors are up to 6 centimeters from anal worlds and very low rectal tumors are 1 centimeter or less from the dentate line. Japanese people are short and hence their limits are different from Western population. And this is important to remember when you are assessing trials from different parts of the world. So now coming to locally advanced rectal cancer and low risk and high risk rectal cancer first. Locally advanced rectal cancer is basically stage 2 and stage 3. So we have already seen the staging. So now this is easy to understand. T3, T4 and node positive disease is basically locally advanced rectal cancer. This looks simple, however, it is not because this is a hot topic for a lot of trials that are happening currently. And they essentially divide the rectal cancer into low risk rectal cancer and high risk rectal cancer. This differentiation is because low risk rectal cancer can be operated upfront. And we are not very worried about this subset of population as far as the trials are concerned. So what is low risk rectal cancer? It is T1 to T3 node negative disease for upper rectal cancer and T1 and T2 node negative disease for lower rectal cancer. All of these patients have CRM negative or the circumferential rejection margin is not threatened. On the other end, high risk rectal cancer, which is a part of most of the trials as inclusion criteria, is T3, T4 node positive for low rectal cancer because in these cases, sphincter preservation and organ preservation are a challenge. In these cases, it is T4 node positive for upper rectal cancer. And most of these patients will have circumferential rejection margin threatened, right? So this is high risk rectal cancer. All T4, low rectal T3, all node positive, right? That is the easy way to remember. So understand this definitions of locally advanced rectal cancer and low risk and high risk rectal cancer. Now, when we talk of management options for these kind of tumors, we have a conventional treatment plan, then the upcoming total neoadjuvant therapy. And the aim of all these plans is the way ahead, that is the watch and wait approach. So all these treatment plans essentially aim at organ preservation because all of us would like if the patients can escape surgery and have excellent survival and prognosis. 
So these are the different options that are available. Let us see the conventional treatment plan first. As I've already said, we have detailed this in another video. But just to explain total new adjuvant therapy, you need to be aware of the conventional approach as well. So in conventional approach for locally advanced rectal cancer, remember that we are talking only of T3, T4 or node positive disease. The options are to give a long course chemo radiotherapy. What that means is that in the neoadjuvant setting, we give 50.4 grays in four to five weeks, plus capsitabine, 5 FU, oxaliplatin, and mucovorin, one or two of them as radio sensitization. Or we use short course uh, radiation therapy, which is 25 grays in five fractions. After long course CRT, we wait around six to eight weeks, reassess and then plan the surgery. Whereas after short course radiotherapy, initially we used to operate after one week. Then the studies came that you can wait up to eight weeks, now up to 11 weeks. And with TNT, we are waiting up to 16 to 18 weeks for the aim of pathological complete response. So after this neoadjuvant therapy, the patients undergo surgery. And then the patients are put on adjuvant chemotherapy based on the preoperative staging as well as the histopathology report. So this is the conventional treatment approach that has been used for locally advanced rectal cancer. What are problems with the conventional approach or why do we need total neoadjuvant therapy? First important point is that up to 25% distant metastasis or distant failure has been noted which is the major cause of reduced disease-free survival and overall survival with the conventional approach. Also, a lot of patients after the surgery have not been able to take adjuvant therapy or they are not compliant or they have bad quality of life due to toxicity because they have already undergone radiation, they have undergone a surgery and then they have to undergo adjuvant chemotherapy which takes a toll on the patient. Also, if we are planning conventional approach, there will be a prolonged time for diversion stoma reversal because the stoma will not be reversed till the adjuvant therapy is complete. Organ preservation, of course, is not possible here because the aim of treatment is just reduction in the disease and primarily the radiation aims to reduce the local regional failure. So organ preservation is not an approach that is taken with the conventional uh, chemo radiation. Again, sphincter preservation rates have not been good with the conventional approach. Total neoadjuvant therapy gives the benefits such as better compliance. It treats the micrometastasis at the earliest and it provides an in vivo tumor biology test before undergoing surgery or avoiding surgery altogether. So let us see what is total neoadjuvant therapy now. So for locally advanced rectal cancer, there are essentially four ways, but we will summarize it in two ways. What you can do is you can give the entire chemo radiation upfront, that is before the surgery, that is total neoadjuvant therapy. In essence, it means that there should not be any chemo radiation given after the surgery, right? Now, there are two terminologies that you need to understand when we are discussing total neoadjuvant therapy. If you use chemotherapy before radiation, it is known as induction chemotherapy as shown in the figure here. The induction chemotherapy is given before the chemo radiotherapy and then the patient is planned for surgery, right? So, this is one way of giving total neoadjuvant therapy. Actually, it, these are two ways of giving total neoadjuvant therapy because you can give the conventional long course chemo radiation or you can give short course radiation both after induction chemotherapy. However, when you give the short course or long course radiation first and then the chemotherapy, that is known as consolidation chemotherapy, right? Because it consolidates on the benefits of radiation. Again, you can use short course or long course radiation first, right? So essentially, there are four types. You use induction chemo with short course. You use induction chemo followed by long course. Or you use short course radiation therapy followed by consolidation chemotherapy. Or you can use long course chemoradiotherapy followed by consolidation chemotherapy.
the aim is that you finish the entire chemo radiation therapy before surgery however there are some trials where they are still discussing adjuvant chemotherapy and even then these trials are under the consideration of total new adjuvant therapy so this is how the entire pathway of treatment in locally advanced rectal cancer is changing rather than mandating surgery for all patients the aim here is to give complete therapy before the surgery to maybe achieve a pathological complete response thereby select patients who may escape surgery in future and go in for close surveillance in an approach which is known as watch and wait approach so there are some key trials in this area and we are just naming these trials 2016 is when these trials started aggressively the polish 2 trial then 2020 the rapido trial and 2022 we had a list of trials the prodis 23 the stellar mskcc immunotherapy trial and the opra trial and in 2023 and beyond we are awaiting the janus trial and the immunotherapy trials however this video we are just discussing what is total new adjuvant therapy you need to understand what is locally advanced rectal cancer what is low risk and high risk rectal cancer and what is induction chemotherapy, consolidation chemotherapy and total neoadjuvant therapy. We will look at all these trials and how to assess these trials and what they point towards and how they help in designing trials of 2023 in the next video. Thank you.